hello everyone first of all uh, let me introduce myself i am varun khuller i am a alumnus of i am calcutta and uh, i'll be taking the session on a to z of gd preparation right so uh, first of all i would like if everyone of you can give me a brief introduction about yourself that uh, you know what's your background let's let's even take my example i'm varun khuller i have done my btech from triple it alabad I also, uh, you know, did my MBA from I am Calcutta. I have hobbies like playing chess, cricket, and football. Okay, right. So can so everybody just type, write their you know, names and hobbies. Can brief introduction. Okay, so Tarun uh, Mudwani, and you're from Pcom. You're from Ajmer. That's wonderful. Right, and you like speaking in public debates. That's nice. Uh, and few national debates and also quizzing. Wonderful, Tarun. Right. Uh, you, Mayur designs stuff in Photoshop. So, Mayur, if when you're talking about this in the interview, I would prefer that if you say that, sir, I would design banners, logos, etc. in Photoshop. Right. So, right, because now you're coming for the interview session in time. Right. Uh, you'll be taking a lot of interviews, so it's best introducing yourself, talking in a very formal way. So stuff is like too wide a term to be used, right? Okay. What about the others? Aisha, Neha, Simran, Chaitanya, Gaurav, right? Mohit Sharma, etc. Okay. Aisha is from Manmai University and hobbies are listening to music, and you're pursuing your internship as a content writer these days. That's wonderful. Okay. So today's session is on GD preparation, right? So first thing I think we should all realize is that. What does it mean to have a group discussion? So first thing is, what is a group? As a first question, you should answer. And what is a discussion? Right, Chaitanya is doing a software job, and Gaurav is from Jabalpur. Oh, nice. Right. And uh, Bhardavaj likes playing Android games. Bhardavaj, see again, you have to be a little specific. What kind of games you right play? Because you're giving me too many opportunities to ask you questions. So please mention a specific game as possible. Right. Vcom honors. Okay. Action and racing. See, it's better you name a couple of games, right? Okay. Now, let's try to understand what does a group mean. Okay. So, group typically are people with similar interests. Okay. People with similar interests. In our case, how are we people with similar interests? We've all taken that snap, right? And maybe IFT. So we have taken, I'd say, aptitude exam. So we are a group of people who ha have taken aptitude exams, right? And I expect that you would have studied a bit of aptitude as well, right? With me on that, everyone? Okay. So understand, you're a homogeneous group, right? Understandable? And that is why I am making you discuss a topic, okay? I want to see whether a homogeneous group who have studied aptitude exam can discuss a topic reasonably. Now, let's understand what does it mean to discuss. Okay, can somebody tell me what does it mean to discuss? Anyone? Navreet? What does it mean to discuss? Uh, see, analyze, analyze a little different. Exchange of ideas, okay. See, discuss means giving pros and cons. Okay, first thing is you give positive points of a topic. And then you give negative points, okay, right? That is how a discussion should be held. Now, first, obviously, let's assume, so as somebody mentioned, uh, Su Sujit, right? He says, let's take about demonetization, okay? Right? So let's assume the topic is demonetization for the time being. Now, somebody would introduce the topic, okay? So let's. For a time being, let's not go into the theory. Let's just discuss, right? Demonetization, right? So, if we're talking talking about this topic, can somebody tell me about what is demonetization? Okay, right. So Neha says, we right. So that 500 rupees and 1000 rupees no longer legal tender. Why? Now reasons given by RBI. So one black money right to get the idle black money into the economy maybe the second fake notes 
There are a lot of fake notes, especially of 1000 rupees. Number three, right? Fake notes or counterfeit notes. And typically, counter terrorist operation in Iran. Right? It is a counter terrorist operation, right? So that you know, a lot of terrorists have, you know, no, you know, these notes, and they will not be able to exchange these notes anymore, right? That's the idea, right? So terrorism will go down, protests in Kashmir Valley will go down because of this. So it is a right. So counterfeit. This is the reasons given, right? Now, in a group discussion, let's assume somebody has refused. Let's assume Neha introduced that this is the reason, and somebody added on this. Now, in the group discussion, what will happen? Right? Other people will start giving pros and cons. Okay, right? Of demonetization according to the government. So first, according to the government, what will happen? Right? Interest rates will go down, right? Number two, sorry, number two in this only, right? What, what else will happen? Which will promote a cashless economy, okay? What else? Ah, uh, Abhishek, we discussed that, right? We've discussed the RBI three points. Now, what does the government say? So it says tax buoyancy will increase, right? Taxes will go up, right? People will pay taxes, and this will in turn benefit the poor, right? That is what they say. No holding of money, that's right. Okay. What are the cons of demonetization? Can anybody give me the cons of demonetization? Okay. So it's it has a time cost. It has a expense. Right? Okay. Uh, the economy will slow down. Problems as their banking infrastructure is poor, right? Okay jolt to the economy. Anything else? Right? Tarun says, as per Manmohan saying, it will drop the economy by 2%. Okay? Anything else? Priyanka, Harsha, Sham, Bohit? Anything from you? Meghna? What are the cons of demonetization? Or pros? You can mention either. Let's go. It lowers the GDP? Yes, it does, Chaitanya. But maybe you can now go a little specific. Right? Specific to industry-wise if you want to. Right? So the bank infrastructure issue, so let me write that, yes. So Karan says it will hit the real estate industry, okay. But the government is saying it's good, right? Prices will go down and, right? Right. So somebody did mention, Aisha mentioned the fact that it says that, you know, promote cashless economy, but there is hardly any good security, right? That's one point. And, of, and also the fact that, right, uh, people don't, don't even know how to use ATMs, don't know how to use POS and a lot of issues are there regarding using of online transactions, right? Exactly. Kanan says people aren't aware about cashless technology. It's difficult for them to adjust to that and be a, you know, a volunteer service for this to happen. Okay. Uh, what are the solutions to the problems? Now, see, understand the fact that at the end of the day, we have written all these points or demonetization. Let's assume we've written all these points. I hope everyone noted them down, right? Okay. So now let's talk about what are the solutions to the demonetization problems or the solutions to the problems of black money in India or the solutions to the problems of... So we have, we have talked about that demonetization was for cashless India maybe. It was for targeting black money. It was for using counterfeit currency. It was for terrorist. The question is, okay, what are solutions to this problem besides demonetization, which could have been implemented by the government and that would have, that would also help, right? So what are the other solutions? Abhishek says abolishing taxes. What kind of taxes? Abhishek, you have given a sweeping statement, okay? Right? So give me say, talk, you know, like, it seems as if you're saying all taxes should be abolished, right? Okay, Karan says you should give benefits to people doing cashless transactions. Wonderful. That's one way. Okay, right? Okay, and there has been a couple of schemes by the government of India for this, right? Wonderful. What else? Education of people towards cashless transactions. Waive surcharges, fees on digital transactions, that's true, Harsha. 
creating awareness amongst poor, right? That's true. Anything else? What about targeting black money? What about the next thing? Let's see. We have talked about this. What about targeting black money? What are the solutions to targeting black money in India? Right? Because as you know, only six percent of black money is in cash. So this was a big lie, called you know, according to a lot of people, that only six percent of black money is in cash. So this is hardly a step for black money. See, uh, Karan, the problem with uh, forcing people, uh, you know, forcing places to become cashless is that you then no longer are dem democracy, and India is a democracy till now at least, right? And democracy is based on giving the people the right to choose the way they want to live, right? And if the state is doing all that, we better stop calling us ourselves a democracy and call ourselves a dictatorship led by Mr. Modi. So. Right, so that argument saying that you should be forcing people to certain way, right? That is anti-democratic in nature, in, in a sense, right? Yes, Kanan, that's true. That you know, people are not aware. That's true. wonderful, right? Okay, Neha says introducing some device rather than Paytm, which doesn't require internet. Yes, uh, that would be wonderful, Neha. That's a good idea. The map is there. Yes, mobile transactions to doesn't require internet. USDT has been implemented. Wonderful. No, but the question is not that. The question is how do we target money and what are the solutions to the black money problem, according to you? What should the government do, right, to target black money? They have done demonetization. People say it has failed because all the money is now back in the banks. Keep a check on gold purchase. Okay, that's one asset. Okay, that's one asset class where you know black money is put into. True, two raids on everyone, unpredictability, strategy. See, then you're creating a you know again a, a place where people will be afraid to do business, right? GDP will be hit further. Sign, that's a big problem, right? If you keep doing raids all the time, what will happen? People will just worry about rates. They will stop transacting. They will stop doing business, right? So that's a problem. Okay, Benami property bill. Yes, that's one solution. Yes, because most of the money is in property. It's a land. Make PAN card mandatory. Okay, true. That's one way. See, the problem is the police state. Even if we want to create a police state, we can't. Okay, right? Because India is still democratic. And you know it's 2017, and two years there are elections. So you know anyone who tries to make it a full state will end up losing elections. So that you know at the end of the day, Mr. Modi doesn't want to lose any elections, right? You will have to disclose the source. People do disclose the source. Okay. What about solutions to counterfeit currency, right? Because uh, in you know according to even uh, the senior RBI officials, you know to counterfeit a note it takes 12 months. Okay, any note in the world can be counterfeited in 12 months, and the US dollar is the most counterfeit currency in the world. What about the solutions to this problem? The third problem: How can we stop counterfeiting of currency? Right? Are there any solutions? Because you know, at least the government thinks there are no solutions to, do, to this. Okay, so I should be saying let's take change and let's go for plastic notes. Okay, that's one solution. Maybe better technology, as Tarun was saying. Rumor of a chip in 2000 notes was a good solution. Karan, you don't want the price to go to, you know, like GPS chip in a 2000 rupee note, right? A wonderful uh, trolls by the BJP come, you know, uh, Twitter handles, but typically that, you know, things like those are not there. And it can't, uh, can't be implemented. It's too costly, right? Too costly, too much work, right? All that. And you always do a cost benefit analysis. Anything else you can do for counterfeit currency? New security measures, that's all. okay. Go cashless. See, Tarun, cashless itself has enough problems. I'm telling you, in the next one year, there will be so many problems, right? And every day there are problems, okay? Right? With cashless. The, two, the transaction cost is too high, right? You And for every time you do a transaction, you give money to somebody, it's too costly for you. Right, Karan, it's a one-time cost. Right, uh, when you make a like a th two thousand rupee note, that costs around I think five to six rupees. It's a one-time cost. On the other hand, when you do you know digital transaction, it's a cost is every time you transact. So it's stupid actually. Digital transactions 
you know, right now, it's stupid to actually do a digital transaction. Because every time you make a transaction, you're paying money, extra money to somebody else. Right? And for a person who's like poor, you know, a 4 rupees, 5 rupees charge on every th transaction is too high. So, you know, it makes no sense. People will not move towards digital, right? Because of these transaction costs. Okay, device said, you know, we detect counterfeit and make it available. That's a good idea. Let's create an app on a phone and which can check counterfeit notes and you know using that everybody can check counterfeit notes right okay let's move ahead what about targeting of terrorism using this how many of you agree that it you know helped in countering terrorism githarun says he agrees to this okay it, it help you saying right anyone else look any viewpoints on okay what are the solutions to you know solving the terrorism problem in india Okay, protests in Kashmir went down. See, everybody was busy exchanging notes, so obviously protests will go down. That's no, you know, no way of measuring, right? That uh, it was popular or it solved the terrorism problem. Okay, right? All of India was in lines. So who has the time to protest, right? And I'm more worried about getting food to my table than protesting, right? At the end of the day. So that's argument is like. Something absurd. So, but are you planning to demonetize every couple of months for this? Because you know that this you say that it works on terrorism. Okay, high denomination currency should be permanently abolished, and we have two thousand rupees notes, Sapishek, right now, and this government only launched that two thousand rupees note. Everybody seen that now? Mangalyaan, purple. Terrorism will not be affected due to demonetization. Okay, no, Karan, that's fine. But I'm saying, what are the solutions to a terrorism problem? See, we know these are the four things that they were doing, right? In some ways. Now, what are the solutions to these problems? Right? What is the problem to terrorism in India? Yeah, that's a 500 pound note. Sorry, 500 euro note. That's a huge note. That means uh, something like 50,000 rupees. Okay, so that's a big note. To be scrapped and obviously you know you can't compare india to europe right uh, in europe there is uh, you know good internet facilities digital transactions are faster everybody knows how to do digital transactions etc et understanding social economic causes of terrorism and then providing steps education to children okay right priyanka anything uh, subodh meghna okay any views on how to stop terrorism in india Okay, creating skill-based economy, right? But see, uh, Nurit, uh, no, Nurit, right? Uh, typically, see, uh, they're very, very educated people who are terrorists, right? So that is no, you know, not an argument. You know, maybe you know the kind of education we are giving these guys anyhow is not not good enough, right? Because it's only for these days education is only as a skill, right? It doesn't give you any values, so anyhow. The education today, which we are getting, definitely has no value. It has all, you know, just one single motive that is maybe profit. Spying on every Pakistan person who enters India, it's too costly. Fine, we do we do try that, but it's too costly. Cyber terrorism is also there, yes, definitely. Some Indian are also terrorists, that's also true. Cash is not being a very huge amount. See, they can always use bitcoins and stuff like that. So, you know, hardly a problem. They will just get smarter, that's all. Next time they will not use cash. Okay, let's continue. Okay, I think uh, we had a very decent discussion on this. Let's understand about the GDPR process in detail now. Okay, let's. Okay. Right, so let's understand how does communication occur. So we will discuss it. So remember the words you use, right, is only 7% of the communication. The way you speak, your tone of speaking, that is, that is the real thing i would say when you speak so the way you say i hate you or i love you changes and the tone decides whether the other person really believes you or not okay right so the tone of the speaker is the key how he is speaking right and the, and the, finally the body language how is his body language? Is he getting annoyed? Or is he still calm? Is he passively aggressive? Or is he aggressive? That would be very, very important. 
So your facial expressions are very very important. Your gestures and your attitude towards others are very very important when you're doing a communication in a group. Right? Everyone? Now, as we have said, there are three types typically passive, aggressive and assertive. I prefer that you are assertive, right? So this is aggressive, right? This is passive and this is assertive. So always keep a smile on your face when you're discussing any topic, okay? Don't be condescending to anyone, right? Be uh, exact and you want to give your point and you want to discuss the topic, right? Always try to discuss the topic rather than giving your own viewpoint, right? So if somebody has given a point, always add to that, always discuss that point a little bit, okay? Abhishek, the way to handle commotion is to maintain the discussion and allowing everyone to speak. Give your point and ask everyone to discuss that point. That ask somebody in the group to discuss that point if possible. The commotion will stop. Right? If you allow that to happen. Okay? If you give everyone the chance, nobody is going to feel that way. Take leadership in the row, in the group and start discussing the with everyone. Right? Don't care whether how many times you have entered or how many times you have spoken. Allow everyone to speak. Okay? And commotion can be handled. Okay, now we'll go into that later, right? So how to improve body language? So first is, please face the person who's speaking. So let's assume, uh, there are so many people, right? And let's assume, like, let's take a circle like this. And here you're sitting, here somebody else, let's assume Rohit. Then Priyanka is sitting here, Tarun is sitting here, right? Nuvrit is sitting here, Abhishek is sitting here, and Aisha is sitting here, let's assume. Now let's assume Aisha is speaking, okay? So normally what will happen is, when I say speaking, you know, these two people stop looking at her, stop nodding to her, and same with these people. It is these two people, that is, these two people who typically will speak after Aisha speaks. Now this is the problem because you are not looking at Aisha while she is speaking, right? So please make sure that you look at the person who is speaking. So as I said, right body orientation, face the person who is interacting. Right? Right posture, always associated with confidence and enthusiasm. Right? And obviously you have to be expressive, maintain eye contact, very importantly, and give the person space. Do not, right, use your hands so that the other person can't speak. Your hands have to be used, but only to give a point. Right? Not to be aggressive. Right? And obviously, keep a very good personal appearance. I'm sure that every one of you would be, you know, at the best personal appearance at the GDPIs. Okay. Now, as we know, uh, typically in a GDPI, uh, you have 7 to 12 participants. Sometimes you have more. But what is given is normally a topic or a case is discussed. Right. And you're given 2 minutes to think and 15 to 25 minutes to discuss. Right. And typically there are no set rules or uh, the evaluators can do anything with it. Okay. So don't really say that, sir, as a Right. Typically, they can do anything with it. Okay, right. The different types of GDs also. So sometimes they give you a topic, let's assume, on the Indian economy, right, or polity or social issue. They might do that. They might give you an ab abstract topic. We'll discuss those as well. Then they might even give you a show you a clipping and then ask you to discuss the topic, right? That's the next one, the clipping topic. They show you a movie clip or they might even give you a photograph. They show you a photograph and they ask you, okay, make a story and then discuss that. The photograph on uh, right so there are various ways of doing this so they can do anything but normally in the mbf world we normally have these two things right right current affairs and abstract topics okay uh, yes abhishek uh, please handle uh, you know try to start the gd fossil okay so introduce the topic okay now we have various types of topics as i was already talking about the fact social political current affairs economic business management i'm abstract Okay, so these are various topics which you should be actually brainstorming and thinking that what to do about them. Okay, abstract topic is like uh, anything, right? Like small is beautiful, size doesn't matter, right? Be the change you want to see in others, anything like that. Okay, so how is uh, how are you evaluated? Let's first understand that. So first is your point. The strength of your points 
is the basic right if you have a new point so that's why i say discuss solutions if you give a solution to a problem you get a point okay so that's point like four marks let's say you know you're getting 10 marks out of 10 so if you're given a new point you'll get four marks if your body language and listening style is good if you're listening to others you're talking to others you're discussing with others you get extra two points for that if you're assertive and articulate you get two points for that and if your communication skill is extremely good you get another two points okay right the like command right so that is how typically i would say you i will be you'll be marked there okay everybody clear on this so i think everybody can manage this you know giving a new solution okay right uh, body language assertiveness etc you know you have to practice while practicing a lot of gds right okay uh, what you need to do is speak in brief and concise points so when you're making your points or uh, after you know the gd topic has been given you know give brief and concise points okay uh, you can use an occasional quotation to add a bit of glamour to your point typically also you can give a story right a short story right about what you know you think about demonetization you give a story that you know you're standing in the atm line and you saw this ha something happening like a old lady was able to take out cash for the whole day right no so on skill set required okay so you're willing to accept different viewpoints so you should be willing to listen so one of the big problems that we face these days is we don't listen our listening skills are very very poor we listen to react not to analyze okay so you have to now analyze what the other person is saying rather than reacting to it right so you should have to be like a little colder but you should be analyzing what the other person has given right then you have to you know as i said actively listening to the person okay now there are various ambiguous terms in the topic now let's assume i give you something like um, a topic can somebody you know give, you know has everybody practice a gtl now or you know this is your first class okay, this is your first okay fine right so typically you'll get you know like uh let's you give you a gd bullock carts or automobiles let's you i give you this gd right what does india need so now what will happen is that people might you know only look in terms of you know what is a bullock cart and what is an automobile rather than talking about the fact that one is from the technological perspective and one is from the you know archaic traditional perspective so this is tradition this topic is nothing but tradition versus modernity okay right so if you take a literally only discuss automobiles and you know bullock carts you miss the point that this is actually talking about you know traditional agriculture versus modernity right so as i said you have to look at the topic from this one perspective and provide some structure to your thought process okay now uh, you need to be very well aware so please attend all the sessions or please attend as many sessions on general awareness right and i expect that during this course of the next two months every day you would be reading the newspaper at least for at least for one hour okay so then only you'll get these examples to support your viewpoint and statistics to you uh, socialism versus capitalism you can but it's basically tradition versus modernity Okay, socialism actually has nothing to do with bullock carts, right? Okay, so how do I generate content? That was, you know, should be the question next, right? Right. So we have the five W's and the H technique and the uh, I use the spec, you know, pestle, but you know, you know, this is my favorite technique to use. But they use the S P H E L P R I. So let's take an example right, and discuss this. Right. So five W's. So who, what, when, where, why. Right. So if you can actually, uh, you know, ask about. Answer these questions. You have enough points, at least five points, right, to discuss the topic. So, and then how? Okay. So now, the topic let's assume is given. Is reservation required in educational institutes and jobs? Okay. 
That's the question now we have. Okay, is reservation required in educational institutes and jobs? So now for this, you should ask the first question. Okay, who needs reservation? That's the first question you should answer. Okay, can somebody tell me who needs reservation? Anyone? I think everybody would have a viewpoint on reservation. I'm sure. Or does anyone need reservation? So Chaitanya says economically backward, right? Economically backwards, right? Definitely. That's one. Historically discriminated community. Anyone, anything else? People whose income is under the poverty line. Okay. See, the, uh, I'll explain to you why, you know, okay. But I understand this point is valid. You know, there should be a reservation for women, right? That's true. Anything else? You know, but uh, in the last couple of years, you find uh, the Patidar movement, the Jat agitation movement, the Kadugu movement in Andhra. So you have people from the affluent sector asking for reservation. Why is that? So this is a next question that you should also address, you know, though maybe a little later, that who are, you know, why is this happening? And Kaisha Singh, maybe it's lack of opportunities. That's one point of thinking about it. So why is reservation opposed? Let's take the next question for the time. You know, why is reservation opposed? Uh, you know, why do you know people dislike reservation? Okay, it is typically against merit. That's true. She reduces the chances of non-deserve. It's a discrimination, sir. Unwanted advantage, unjust many times. So typically, as you say, it's just like the demonetization. It's badly implemented in India. So implementation is bad. So, you know, as you know, there's a quote I use. The remedy is worse than the, the disease. Because of its bad implementation, demonetization is, the, you know, the remedy is worse than the disease. Or, you know, reservation is basically taken by the creamy layer, you know, because they are, you know, SC elites are there, children caste elites, and they tend to take the same with ST elites, and now we have OBC elites, and they tend to take reservation, their benefit of reservation, okay, and that's a problem, right? Okay, does anyone know about, you know, who all are getting benefited? from reservation right now okay there's political reservation also right for women right at least one third in panchayati raj institutions and municipal corporations right one third okay so in some places one and a half okay right let's take the next one what are the problems in implementation of reservation because we understood that reservation implementation is bad what is the purpose of reserv reservation Right? What are the consequences if it's not implemented or if implemented? Okay. So this is how you're supposed to think about reservation. I would say. Everybody with me on this? Yes. No. So let's take the next one. Okay. When was reservation started? This is a question. You know, which I think this is something which will really help you in the introduction of a GD. Okay. Right. All the reserve people protest, that's one, okay. Uh, one of the consequences. Right? But people protest in India for anything, right? So that has hardly a problem, I would say. But, you know, the question is whether it's actually wrong to do this. Right? Protest is gonna happen anyhow in a country like India. That is how democracies are. Right? There was a protest that Donald Trump became president in America. Right? If so they can protest on the election, I think we you know that's okay. Oh, right. It didn't start in the 50s. It started in, in the 1909. Or maybe even previous to that. In the British era, it started. Okay. Uh, in 1909, we had the separate electorates for the first time. So this reservation policy was the British policy of divide and rule. Okay. And still used by politicians to divide and rule us. Right. So actually, you know, it's reservation is extremely, extremely bad. Okay. Uh, it's not on 10, it's not for 20, it is for 10 years and every 10 years it, the amendment is again passed in the constitution. Reservation was for 10 years. So see, as I was saying, you know, you have to get your facts right about the topic. And that's why I'm saying, please attend all the GK sessions as many as possible. Right. So that you can learn about all this. Right. It's for 10 years, right? And every 10 years, it gets added 10 years, right? 
So it seems to be a never-ending cycle. And that is why maybe people are against it. Okay. Uh, now the question is, should it be implemented in jobs, especially private jobs? Because public sector jobs are too less. So should there be reservation at private jobs? Right? And what will happen if it is affected? Or can it be done? That's right. Private jobs cannot be forced. Why can't private jobs be not, cannot be forced, Abhishek? We have already forced demonetization on the whole of India. Right? So it can be done. Economic freedom, you don't you don't have economic freedom right now. You can only take out forty five hundred rupees from your own bank account. So don't talk about economic freedom in India anymore. See, at least right now we don't have any economic freedom. There's a financial emergency imposed by the government of us in some ways. Right? Uh, private jobs needs talent. Okay, private jobs, yes, that's true. But government jobs also need talent. What is that, right? That's no argument. People are going to counter you. That's all. Right? They won't implement this. See, you can tell, give them the choice, either close down, either implement. That's hardly an issue. Again, the same thing, the demonetization argument still goes. Right? That everybody, the private sector, all, everyone has to suffer, right, for demonetization. So they can suffer like this also. Okay, next, let's take the next one. Okay, you can think about it later. Why? Why should there be reservation? Why should reservation not be there? Why people support it and why people are opposing it? And why it has become so, so important that we are discussing it? Right? Uh, you can talk about the fact that it's a jobless growth. There's an article on the Indian Express this week. Okay. Uh, one thing you can do is that, uh, let me see. Right. I just suddenly remember, uh, there's an article I wanted to share with you all. Uh, search for at PKK on Facebook. You'll find that uh, you there's a you know, page on which there are a lot of essay topics are there, right? And you can actually, there's an article this week on the Indian Express, uh, Merit versus Quota, okay? Indian, Indian Express, or you can search that, Merit versus Quota. And typically you can see, you know, uh, there's a wonderful discussion on this, right? So has anybody gone through that article? This week, there's a wonderful article. If you haven't, you can search for this and uh, on that, you know, the link I've given, you you can find it after scrolling down a couple of pages, right? Okay, Abhishek said he did read it, it had a left-wing bias. That's true, Abhishek. See, you, when somebody is giving you opinion, it's bound to have a bias, okay? So you need some viewpoints because, see, at the end of the day, you need content and content is for 4 marks out of 10. Everybody remember that. You need content and content is 4 marks out of 10, 4 marks are good. Right? So we take those four marks reading different topics, right? Okay. Right. Uh, let's look at the next technique that right, is the right. So social, political, historical, economic, legal, technological, religious, and international. Right? So and with social I also always add psychological. Right? What is the psychological impact of a certain thing? What is the psychological impact of reservation? I'll give you an exam example. So I had a very close friend in 2010. Right? Very, very intelligent, very rich, very handsome guy. Right? Uh, but he was from the SC community. Okay? Right? Uh, we both took CAT together. Uh, I asked him after the CAT percentiles. So he got 96 point something. I got 99.8 something. So I asked him that, yeah, you are, you know, as intelligent as I am, if not more, right? Why did you get 96? He said, I didn't study. I knew that I would get through even with a normal person. So it has a psychological impact on the person. He thinks he has to study less than others. Okay. And that's the case with a lot of elites from the SC community. Right. So that, this is something that is wrong, I would say. Right. So, you know, why couldn't he study more? It wouldn't matter. He would still get the seat, but he could have did his best, right? It reinforces mediocrity, maybe, right? Let's take this one. If there are factual topics, try to talk about the history of the topic, okay? Right? Discuss the pros and cons, and give your perspectives and give examples relevant to this. 
and never take a definitive stance in the beginning. So whether when we are talking about demonetization, don't say it is good or bad in the beginning. Right? Only talk about it whether it's good and bad in the long run. Okay, everyone. Okay. Uh, let's take another topic. I think we should actually now discuss another topic. I think. Okay. So what what kind of topic would you like now? From which part? I would say let's discuss another topic. We'll discuss right now. Don't worry. Stakeholders approach also. Right. Uh, yeah, let's discuss the GST. Uh, name. See, we already discussed Harsha. Another. Let's take another one. Uh, yeah, Abhishek, we've already discussed. We, let's take a political topic. Let's assume. So let's take a political topic. We'll take the abstract topic after this, Harsha. No problem. Right. So political topic. Um, yeah. So one India, one election. Let's take that one. Let's take Abhishek's topic for the time being. One India, one election. That's typically. Uh, yeah, we'll discuss that. We'll, we can pick up all the topics. But let's use the Tessel technique. That is the fairy technique. So first give a political point. Okay. Then an economic. Okay. Then a social psychological. Then a legal. Then a technological. Then a environmental. Okay. And typically you can add to that international and gender. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. These 9 points you can typically mention about 1 into 1 election. Let's see how. Right. Okay. So Pesul, uh, let's use political. So uh, in India, there's so many political parties. It would be extremely difficult for them to actually have one, you know, have elections at state level, at PRI level and at the Lok Sabha Rajasthan level at the same time because it's a huge logistical problem for the political parties. But yes, they can have economies of scale, right? And hence, they will spend less money in elections than they normally do because elections in India are too costly, right? So what is the social psychological impact? When all the elections are held at one day, People have a psychological way of thinking that now India is together. India is one country, right? Like one India, one election, one India, one GST. Again, I would say it has a psychological impact on people of India that it has the same. Okay. With me on this, and okay, Tarun saying huge population, we can't manage it. So it's a technological challenge, right? Uh, you know, you need a lot of parliamentary forces. So you see the UP elections, right? Uh, it has been, I think, held in seven phases or eleven phases, right? So that is another one, right? Just check how many phases the UP elections is being held, right? So that kind of tells you what kind of logistical challenges seven phases kind of say, right? So again, what is impact it would have internationally on the image of India? That you know, whole of India is in elections, right? So with the whole of India is in elections, everything stops, right? Suddenly, so it has an impact on that. That now only nothing will happen in that country for at least one month because elections are being held. Okay. Then gender does it impact the women of our country? Okay. Is it gender sensitive this day? So one India one election is it gender sensitive to the people of India? Right. Okay. Everyone will looking for results. That's true. Right. Okay. So this is how you can use PESEL format, right, along with gender and international. Right, to give various points on this, whether it should be done or not. See, again, Karan, always talk about both sides and then, you know, give solutions to the problems you have posed. Okay, because you're supposed to discuss solutions. You're not just supposed to give points. Everyone with me on this, Rohit, Meghna, give solutions. Okay, discuss a problem, give solutions. Discuss a problem, give solution. Somebody gives a problem, you give a solution. Okay. Right? Then only it would be fruitful. Let's take another one. Okay. Let's take an abstract topic. Okay. And it's also an essay topic which I posted on right on my page. Right. Uh, so be the change you want to see in others. Be the change you want to see in others. This is a quote by Mahatma Gandhi. You can also write an essay on it if you like. Right. So this is uh, in context with another article in the Indian Express this week, in which you know uh, this article is that you know. Uh, despite the fact that Modi is saying black money should not be, you know, should be will be targeted in the private hands, but uh, still all, you know, all political parties, including the BGP themselves, you know, have a lot of black money, right? And they have used black money in the past, in the present, also, right? So this is a huge problem that 
you saying everyone else act to be holier than you but you are still you know doing this right okay everyone so be the change you want to see in others politically right socially like give the example of marriages that we still take dowry right in various marriages in india despite the fact we say that dowry is bad so typically hypocrites right this is what it means that you know typically they are hypocrites right and so on economically right we say that everyone else should pay taxes but us and so on right everyone okay with this getting the idea that abstract topics again can be handled using the same format okay now uh, how to structure your idea one of the best ways of doing that is this break for approach so give your point let's assume you are brainstormed and you given you have a point you give a rational behind that point why are you saying that point okay that you mention the fact that counterfeit currency you know it's wonderful if you use plastic techniques so give a rational that it is harder to counterfeit right plastic currency right typical so you give a point that plastic currency should be used right it should stop counterfeiting so then you say sir rational sir it's very extremely hard to counterfeit plastic currency the technology is more expensive then third is give an example where it has been done so in singapore so there is you know plastic currency and it has really worked well. and the conclusion that so yes i believe that you know and i believe everyone else agrees with me that counterfeit currency should be used everybody okay with this okay understand this break format can somebody use this for a topic now right i want everyone to use this topic right now this right you know we have discussed various topics give your point give a rational give a example and give a conclusion right take the example of demonetization only if you want to right give your point about demonetization give your rational behind it give an example and give a conclusion right i think we've discussed demonetization in in depth so i think everyone yeah yeah right here rohit kanan meghna subodh surjit sai harsha everyone give use this for, format right now aisha neha chatanya priyanka everyone right give a point about demonetization give a rational why you think so give a example that you and then you conclude that this is the right way of doing things take your time i'm giving you a couple of minutes to so, shall like right like this a uh, demonetization is a attack on black money so i feel the rational is to scrap black money floating in the market lying idle in the market the example would be so there's so much black money in the real estate sector so i would say that you know, looking at the slow down in the real estate sector i would conclude that this you know demonetization has worked okay like that go like a slow proper strategy okay so your point is uh, demonetization sir is badly implemented the rational sir there are more than 72 notifications in the last 50 days right and the example so you can see you know first they were saying that you know 4000 rupees can be exchanged then 4500 then 2000 then no no could be exchanged so it led to chaos right and i would conclude by saying that it would have should have been back, you know well planned and would have should have been well executed right so okay going go like that okay rohit concluded always conclude that i would i say i would i believe that everyone else also would agree with me this conclusion is both important you have to involve everyone the gd right so conclude good point sir right but conclude it with everyone right because you have to bring them all in in the discussion ha huh. see abhishek again you have not concluded you have to conclude by making everyone and else discuss this point okay your conclusion has to be that bring everyone right names name people that yes i believe that my friend here would agree with me that yes it was a ill thought move now then he can maybe disagree with you also and but then you are discussing so the group discussion has started right ha huh. rohit that's fine right right you always invite others to you know your to your viewpoint because then the you know everybody is relaxed ki ha yaar hamare se bhi pooch raha hai he is not just you know interested in you know gaining right remember if you do this in gd tumhare marks to lag gaye baaki honge lage na lage tumhare lag chuke okay chahe ek bar hi bola tha right or uh, see do you people do you agree with me people as like to you know condescending so you just ask us uh, you know typically ask them right i i hope that you agree with me please give your points okay right or please discuss this point that i have given 
I, I would like everyone else to discuss this. Kanan, you still haven't brought everyone else in the discussion. You need to get them in a discussion, right? Because if your ending is not giving everyone else a chance to speak, they will feel as if you are, you just want to, you're selfish, right? Because at the end of the day, I prof, you know, it would be wonderful if you have a good discussion because, right, that normally doesn't happen in a GDPR. Okay, right, what Modi has done in effect is to force a revolutionary change on a civilization that has got too used to on baby steps. Yes, that's true. Now, give your rational behind that, saying that. You've given your point now, make them. Give your rational, right? Give your rational and your example. Then, then conclude what other steps could have been taken or say that, you know, Typically, what other steps should have been taken in the past, which would have been revolutionary, right? Ah, so, 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 it's better you name a few people and all others. Always mention, if I would like to discuss this with all of you. I would like everyone to give your viewpoint on this talk, this point that I have given. Okay? And then somebody will say, I'll agree with you. Somebody will say, I disagree with you. But that point would be discussed and that would be wonderful for the group discussion. Okay. Now, uh, let's take another technique, which is for abstract topics. So the idea is use POPs, that is people, objects and places, behavior, events, actions, nature and society, right? So let's take the example of a topic like black. So I have black as a topic. So typically I would say, you know, somebody would give me this topic black, I would start with black money because, you know, that is the most common way of talking about it. But there are various black bodies in physics, there are black places, right, there are black people, this black behavior, this black event, right? There's black actions, right? Black nature and black society. Right? You can talk about all of them, right? So pop beans is a way of handling, right? Abstract topics. Please note this, everyone, because I think uh, this is something that would be very useful, right? So people, objects, places, right? Uh, see, uh, Abhishek, this is actually a civilizational issue as well, right? So when you relate black to something negative, it is actually saying that white is good. And that actually is racist in nature uh, because of the Europeans. Uh, they think that black is bad. Typically, they are the worst people in the world. So Europeans, Americans are the worst people in the world. They colonized the world. They destroyed the world. They are the cause of global warming and so many evils of this world. Okay, right? It's racist to say that, you know, Black is associated with evil. Uh, should I watch such caricatures? Black hole is a little more neutral, I would say. Black sea, that's a black sea is right in you know, it, between Turkey and Europe and the states of Ukraine, Euro Romania, Mold Moldova, right, Greece, etc. are situated on it. Black Friday, okay, yes, you can associate with religion as well, that's true. Anything else? Black Jack. Yeah, so let's play some Tash now. You know? Let's play cards, poker, blackjack. Right? Now, I think nobody will say black dog, right? I think, right? Not into black dog, I hope, everyone, right? Black, you know, black is, you know, black is a color, right? And coal is black and nickel, right? Black is my favorite color. You can start even with that. The black is my favorite color. And there's a black dress I really like to wear every time I go out for, right? Uh party or something like that. Black mailing is another one, right? See, black as a connotation is racist because it is used by the whites. Okay? Right? Because we typically, that is how we think. Let's take the next one. So, what, how do you, you do lateral thinking, right? Uh, if possible, everyone I would like, you know, spend some time reading about la lateral thinking. So what does it mean to think laterally is that first you only think of what is the positives associated with doing that thing. Okay. Don't think anything else. Okay. The problem these days we have with thinking is we think of the negatives at the same time as the positives. Right. So what does it mean? So let's assume I'm studying coin or I'm studying DILR or I'm studying English. Verbal. So what I think is I think of the negatives of doing verbal or quant or di lr instead of just thinking about the positives so what has happened is my energy to study that topic because it is hindered by my ability to think positively right i don't study as hard as it because i think negatively at the same time as positive so lateral thinking calls for putting a thinking hat and 
one of the hacks is only think positive. Okay, if possible, please do watch a video. Edward D. Bono has a wonderful book on lateral thinking, right? And creativity again, right, is required. So just think of solutions to the problem. Don't even think of the cons. Just think of solutions, solutions, solutions. How this would be good? How demonetization would be good? Just think of that. Okay, how black would be can be discussed. Think of that. Don't think about the counter to that. Okay. And Rohit says Black Buck and Salman Khan. Wonderful, yeah, Rohit. <laughs> right? Okay. Linkages to fact fiction, obviously, as Rohit has linked Salman Khan with Black Buck. Right? Okay. Right? Ability to understand and develop other concepts. Avoid overly philosophical discussions, definitely. Because, right, you want to discuss with people, right? You want to associate with them. So, give a philosophy and then stop and reach a consensus quickly. Okay, so typically, you know, abstract topics, sometimes you feel that yeah, it's too difficult to discuss, but you realize that the discussion is happening. So, abstract topics are easier to discuss than factual topics. This is I'll tell you that. I would feel, you know, Aisha, see, if you don't have enough knowledge, it's a big problem. You better get knowledge. Okay. Uh, you know, it's abstract topics are easier to discuss because you don't need any knowledge. So, Aisha, I would like that you would, you know, attend all the sessions, go through the articles, right? And, you know, watch as many videos that we have posted on the YouTube channel of Bullseye as well, right? And uh, you can always access the page I have on Karate as well. Okay, abstract topics can be best be discussed using exemplification, right? Green is better than red, can be discussed using a meaning, right? Green can be defined as capitalism and red as communism and so on. No, it will come to sources. There's a lot of source, you know, you know, abstract topics on the Bullseye website itself. So you can go through that, right, to the GDPI section at Bullseye website. Hit bullseye.com. Yeah, exactly. Abhishek traffic lights red and green, right? Entry strategies. Now, the problem is, you know, sometimes you feel that, you know, there are too many people talking. So always enter in the lows. Interject the discussion with a question. If somebody is, you know, uh, you know, giving a point. Uh, ask a question to that person, right? That would be a wonderful way. Or uh, enter with a supportive statement. That if somebody is given a point, say that, sir, I agree with your point, but I agree with your point on demonetization, but I would like to point out that this was necessary and this is a revolutionary change for our country, right? So, and you can always increase the volume, like I have increased while I was speaking, right? Uh, pay players and purple patches, right? So, see, Rohit, if you don't know something, it's not going to really help out. Okay? There is no solutions to in you not knowing. So, it's better you increase your knowledge as much as possible. Uh, Tarun, uh, reach a consensus. You will not reach a cons consensus so easily. Okay? Right? So, you have to, in the middle of GD, when you have, solution, you have to give solutions, and when the solutions are accepted, then you typically tend to reach a consensus that, you know, what does that, you know, thing mean? Okay. After listening to everyone, consensus can only be made if everyone has given his points. Right. Uh, as I said, power of content is the most powerful in this. And as I said, the prec approach is wonderful. Voice modulation is something that you can only do by practicing. So what I want everyone to do is, if read an article every day, and read it aloud, right? Pick up the newspaper, read the article aloud, the whole article. So the more you practice speaking, right, the better you'll get. Okay? Diplomatic argumentation and counter arguments are wonderful, definitely. And eye contact and just as I said, please look at the person who's speaking, right? Just don't sit there, right, looking down or looking at your own notes or on your own piece of it. Okay? Uh, don't speak for too long, right? Don't be, right? So, Typically, I would say, I believe three interjections are enough energy. So, if you speak spoken three times, that's good enough energy, right? Uh, don't give stats or bluff facts. Don't take a direct stance from the start. Don't force a conclusion, right? Don't force your ideas and point on others, but ask them to discuss. Aggressive. Typically, you don't need to be aggressive, okay? Uh, as we were talking about, be clear and concise. Provoke others to contribute. Don't rotate your do rotate your eyes 
right across the group so look at everyone right while speaking that something again has to be practiced now this point is extremely difficult to implement so please note this and practice this and this is an art this is something that only can be learned if you practice it right uh, identify the core of the issue code statistics if you have any especially if you have some something like a budget statistics this year the budget will come in first feb so you know a lot of you will have to follow this because of this right it will be discussed in various videos uh, read editorials of the leading newspapers and magazines as i was saying right as i said that you can follow the pit bulls website etc okay i post editorials on my page every day so you can go through that right now the question is should i be the first speaker or should i speak late in the queue now my uh, view point is that uh, if you don't know too much about a topic you should introduce it okay if you know a lot about this topic you can wait and then speak okay now if you don't know too much about the topic right uh, introduce the topic and then ask everyone else to speak about it right if it becomes a fish market right try to become a leader and try to ask everyone for conclusions and solutions to a problem okay rather than trying to you know add a point right when you typically see everyone is giving a lot of points you don't give a point you ask them to discuss that point okay uh rohit uh, you can email that question right okay about this right i think you can right rohit that's not a problem if you are an online student i think so this should be no problem but you need to register for the gd as you know right okay so you can talk to the admin for that okay uh now the question is somebody makes a personal attack what should be my reaction see uh, in this case he had made a, made a personal react you are not supposed to respond to it okay uh, it's best best you ignore it for the time being right there's no point in uh, having an argument with somebody in the group discussion because both you, you know you got marks is, marks are definitely on the line okay yes you should take notes of the gd if possible right you should be keeping a mental note of who said what and if possible summarize all that at the end of the gd okay right and by when talking about let's say you get a chance you try to talk about what everyone else has spoken and give your view point in that as well if uh, no new points are being made and people are just stating the similar points uh, typically that means a gd you know you don't know too much content you really can't do too much except for the fact that you can discuss that point in depth okay go in depth use the pestel approach on that point itself okay uh that's why you know typically you should not change your stance because you should not take a stand initially okay uh definitely if there's a counter point if you know you can agree to it right but it's best you do not take a stand initially in the gd okay now the problem is uh what is your gd stage do you have a inhibition to speak fear of public speaking fear of english fear of reaction response or fear of content if you have this you better better ensure you speak and speak well okay you should be determined to enter in the gd okay as i said you should practice speaking you should practice reading an article every day you should actually read the newspaper aloud like at least for a couple of hours every day then only you will be fine okay and then you know fear of other reaction or response is best handled if you attend gds okay and fear of content uh, there is enough content in the market i'm sure if you search for various topics you will find solutions i'm saying our, our website has articles on so many topics and we keep on posting videos i'm sure that that can be handled well you can abhishek but let's not do that i would say now second stage that you sometimes enter so now let's assume you practicing gd you sometimes enter but you fail to sustain to speak or you know impress so this shows that you need to speak well so work on eye co contact and gestures and mention focus on prep pace of speed and typically again this is practice right defend yourself when somebody is speaking against you right understand you have to hold when you enter and you have to voice moderate and the pace of speech okay now this again our practice points okay uh, now you are comfortable entering you get heard but you have little issues right to convince everyone okay right speaking well more than times will turn negative right now that this is the problem speak well three four times and focus on group concerns try to get everyone in the group try to focus on what the group is talking about okay and encourage everyone to speak if you are comfortable doing this okay 
right do some smart police work in the group okay like as is what i was saying that you know what abhishek right was talking about that what if you know you keep this discussion within the topic pool like right? keep the topic right if you, everybody is discussing from the topic get back that yes sir we are supposed to discuss solutions to this problem that is demonetization not we are not going to talk about you know modi and you know his personal politics right if the discussion goes to that this plus work is only run when you are already done, okay so as i said you know content work you know there are wonderful content workshops by bolzai right so you can attend all these there uh, there are internet right sources newspapers and magazines so read the hindu or the indian express okay the television discussions which you were should i prefer a television discussion called rajya sabha tv right so you know don't watch times now too much right or uh, you know all these event based management so these days we have news channels they are not news channels they are event channels they make a event about everything okay so we have social you know the social media we have these days event channel so you know a girl gets molested they make a event out of it and the wonderful thing is even the girls actually react to it okay so we are event based channels that we have please do not watch those it's wasted of time watch the lok sabha or rajya sabha tv uh, there's a 9:30 it comes a wonderful uh, episode every day the big picture okay right so i would i say we should see that yes you can read any magazine that's fine right you can outlook is fine as well right but i have not read outlook for a very long time as i said this is my email in case you have any doubts about this session uh, or you want to give any feedback about the session it's wonderful if you can send an email on this right uh, then uh, you can talk about this is my phone number in case you need to call me please drop a message right uh, sometimes it's you know i don't know who's calling me and what's up right so please drop a message before you call me and uh, you can follow me on uh, facebook as well at vkk47 on in facebook right okay um yes tushar was asking uh i want out we don't have any stats to support our content any bunty hyper arbit stats please don't do that yes they do cross check okay right so don't do that uh yes abhishek i am from amita but i passed out a long time ago right okay please uh, go through a lot of these uh, newspapers in the next one month it will be wonderful and practice reading aloud you know that is the best way of actually speaking well in a group discussion or in an interview thank you so much